And here it is, the moment you've been waiting for. Now, yesterday's show, we pointed out Ripple's very own Stuart Alderati, legal counsel to Ripple. He did the one minute, uh, what do you want to call it, in regards to teaching people about crypto. Now, guess who's next on that list? You see it right here. Ripple's very own, the mad scientist, time machine guy, Doc Brown, as Larry would refer to him, is from Back to the Future. David Schwartz says, I thought nobody could learn things in minutes. Well, here's Joel Katz, a.k.a. David Schwartz, creator of XRP. And look at this, or the XRP ledger, I should say. Teaching some crypto in one minute. The man along with Brad Garlinghouse who will change the global financial system. So it's a little bit longer than a minute. It's a minute 17, maybe because they're, they're asking him to do it. So let's see, does, does he actually do it in one minute flat? It's interesting to see these types of things. And if anything, who will be next? Would there be Brad Garlinghouse tomorrow or somebody else from um, Ripple? We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to play it roughly a minute, and we'll be right back. So the kind of information this is pretty tough to pack, you know, the kind of information that I want into one minute. I'm David Schwartz, CTO at Ripple, and this is Crypto in a Minute. Got one minute. Okay. Well, the first consensus model was proof of work. I guess the advantage of proof of work was at the time it was the only game in town and it allowed for a decentralized system that is one that doesn't rely on a central authority. Later developments included things like federated Byzantine agreement with the XRP ledger uses and proof of stake. Some of the advantages of these later developments are lower cost. Proof of work costs millions of dollars to pay the miners for the energy that they use. Proof of stake doesn't have that cost and can provide comparable security. And if you're the person who's paying those costs, if you're the people who are using the system, how much it costs just to keep the system secure is like a tax. It's residual friction that the system doesn't need. Federated Byzantine Agreement, which is what the XRP ledger uses, makes the users of the system the stakeholders rather than the people who have the most money to spend on tokens or power. And that provides a more sort of democratic system where the costs can be low and the performance can be high. Oh, that was pretty cool. You got a bit. That was pretty cool. Nice to see David Schwartz all, you know, happy and gung ho. Can we all agree on this? Whether you know you're a fan of XRP or not, do they, you know, show the body language of a of a person that feels as though, you know, oh god, you know, getting in front of, all right, uh, XRP use case, um. I don't know. I mean, you know, there's that SEC thing going on right now, but um, all right. Well, you know, we have cross board payments, and you know, um, we provide on demand liquidity if somebody was to access it, you know, a bank or something. No, 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 no. You don't get that body language. It's not like that at all, right? It ain't no Principal McDicker looking guy from Beavis and Butthead who's like, oh. Be with somebody. Uh, it's what XRP is gonna freaking solve. Um, it's not just an inoperability. It's uh, you know, you don't get that. He's cool. He's relaxed. He's calm. He ain't acting like Principal McDicker from or McVicker from Be Some Butthead. He ain't acting like that. Cool, collected, calm, just like Stuart Alderati. 